Twitch turns off, shut the fuck up. This is ridiculous. This is exactly how it's the best way to start. Alright, welcome to episode 10, ladies and gentlemen. This will be the third and final episode, hopefully, for the week. Um, if I can get my fucking shit together. It's a milestone. Woo! It is a milestone. We've done two whole episodes. This is as far as we got with our last podcast. Yeah, if we can just fucking quit here while we're ahead. Uh, tonight we have uh, two guests, uh, as, as opposed to one, which I said in the last episode. Uh, we have first and foremost our new our new friend Stephen March. Just uh, yeah, yes, sir. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can Off to a great right. start. Uh, right. He he is uh, a local Springfield musician. He's in uh, two bands: uh, Bury Him Alive and Fraught with Peril. Yes, nice. sir. Um, and then we also have our friend of the show, Tess Devine. She's back filling in for. Ian or Brandon, whichever the Someone. fuck you want. Whatever. But we're less mad at Ian. So yeah, we're less mad at Ian. Brandon died about an hour and 20 minutes ago when he oh. texted me oh, that he was too drunk to show up. To us. So um, bummer. But you know, we'll, we'll press on with that. We, we <laughs> make two. And actually, we have about the same amount of people we usually do for yeah. our guest episode. Works out well. Um, so, Tess, we've already met you. Uh, yes. For a refresher, everybody, Tess has her own podcast, Nighttime Tess Divine, which I think has, like... Stalled or something, it's, but that's okay. It's stalled, yeah. yeah. I'm working on it. It's yeah. It's a lot of hecticness that's come on. No, I'm fine. Not too. Um, I hear Jello shots help with that. They do. <laughs> they really do. I should try that. <laughs> I'll look it's into very it. Therapeutic. Research. Um, Everclear, not vodka. <laughs> no, that's what we used to do. <laughs> uh, yeah. I seem to remember Everclear <laughs> Jello shots. Lit himself on fire making them. Uh, so you've all you've all met Tess before. Uh, so let's get to know our 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 new guest. Andrew here. and Mitch are also here. Uh, Andrew and Mitch are also here. <laughs> yes. Uh, or I guess we never did do the, the round, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, anymore. Now they know. It's okay. Now they know. Everyone's fun up. It's okay. So in, introduce yourself to the nice people listening. <laughs> well, what do you want to know? I don't know. Just well, what sign are you astrologically? Talk yeah. to us. Oh, oh, oh. Sure. First oh. of all, we'll maybe what's your sign? Well, yeah. maybe my sign. I'm a Gemini. Okay, um, there you go. Okay. I'm rocking a badass Children of Bodom shirt from uh, them and Amana Martha at <laughs> Elkett's nice. house so, back in nice. August. As a Gemini, does that mean that you're precluded to like threesomes? No. Okay. <laughs> You're a terrible <laughs> improv. <God>. Oh, no. <laughs> I no, no, I actually, I know jack fucking shit about astrological science. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the fuck that is. I know that I, think that I am a Sagittarius. And I'm an Aquarius. So I'm like okay, okay, I can, I can fill oh, in oh, some. Oh, test okay. All right. Sagittarius I is a, a fire sign. You said Aries? Is that what you are? Aquarius. Aquarius. Oh, air sign. sign. Okay, that's air sign. No, no. I'm a fire it's water bearer. bearer, but it's an air sign. I know this. That's I'm a, fucking I'm a, dumb. It is. So no, I'm an Aquarius too, so it's okay. What's a Gemini? Gemini is an air sign, and it's the twins. So you're kind of like anything. I always feel like fire. Air sign is top. I always it's, feel like fire, though. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But you're an air sign, and you're the twins. So it means like you've got like twins. multiple personalities, I guess. Like, not in a weird that's way, scary. but like... But just yeah, which one are we thing. getting? Oh, God. <laughs> are you gonna change? Should happening? I let them out? <laughs> or just, should I let the bad one out? <laughs> not, not in a bad way, but it's more of an. A, like, I guess you have like a you have a personality. I guess that's like halfway there. So. <laughs> that's always a good start. Yes, yes. yes. Skynet fucking not one. Nailed it. <laughs> no. So uh, okay, so uh, they they know what your what your sign is and shit you're wearing. I don't know. Uh, tell, them, yeah, yeah. tell them a little bit about. Uh, uh, about your bands, like, well, uh, uh, like what you were telling us earlier. Basically, uh, I started music about six years ago with guitar. Um, I fucked my knee up playing basketball, and I, I was in, you know, I couldn't play, so I was like, you reached the crossroads, the basketball yeah, or guitar. Yeah, and it came down to, <laughs> and uh, it was during that ice storm, 07, I was oh, trapped yeah. at my buddy's house, and he had a, an SG, and I sucked ass, and he taught me the <laughs> opening. He taught me the opening notes to like smoke on the water, and it was terrible. I couldn't play without <laughs> fret buzz, and my timing was all off. And no, but it still sounds badass. And I was just like, "Yep, that's right. Yep, I'm nailed so it. good. <laughs> I'm going." No, I was like, "I suck good. ass, but I will fight. I want this." There was a fire lit under my ass, and when it was that fucking cold, a fire was nice. <laughs> <laughs> and truth be told, I was having a lot of anger issues because I didn't have sports. Like I don't know, I practiced yeah, every day. Yeah, I, know, I put yeah. my shit into that, and so I, like. It was really nice, and then I, I just kept busting my ass there, and I had a couple of really good friends that were kick-ass at guitar. One of them was the guitarist in Merriam as well, Daniel Padilla. Yeah. He taught me pretty much everything I know on guitar, and a few years back, they talked me into learning drums to play drum, uh, you know, to play drums for this band, which is Merriam Alive, and we uh, rocked a bunch of shows there you know, in Springfield, and we went up to St. Louis a few different times, but mostly just kept it local, played a whole nice, fuck yeah. ton of free shows and like yeah. $3 shows, just yeah. as cheap as we could rock it. So we don't really give a fuck. We all have jobs. Oh, yeah. We just want to mm-hmm. rock. We, 
All right, like if I could play fifty thousand people, yeah, I'd want to get paid. But well, yeah. <laughs> if there's fucking arena, if there's but... twenty dudes with a Megadeth shirt on a Monday night at a bar because they're habitual drinkers, I'm not gonna charge them. Sounds they're already like paying enough to them. They're habitual drinkers on a Monday night. They mm-hmm. need their money. I need my money when yeah. I'm a habitual, habitual, <laughs> habitual <laughs> hey. drinker. <laughs> A new uh, word has but, just uh, informed. Yeah, yeah. Habitual. Well, I, I don't know. I just kind of went from there. And just recently, uh, back in June, I started playing bass. And I joined Fraught Apparel because they needed a bass player that, you know, wouldn't flake the fuck out. Or, yeah. or was willing to put in the <laughs> hours, you know. Beach. Well, I told them, look, I'm no bass player, but fuck it, why not? Because last time I said fuck it, why not, I picked up drums. And that went great. So I wasn't about to impede the flow. No, yeah. Like, <laughs> might as well try it this time. It never hurts. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I gave it my best. And ever since then, that's been that's been fun as fuck. Playing bass is awesome. And I mean, that's kind of... going. Yeah, no, it's great. It's it's not a, You don't have to be as flashy as rocking a lead guitar or anything yeah. like mm-hmm. that. Or, you know, you, don't have, you have bass solos or some, you know, shit like that. But it, it's... I don't know. It's not as stressful... To play yeah. that shit on stage and like, well, yeah. it, I for me, I've always liked like it's always seemed to me like if you play bass, you're not under as much pressure as say the singer or the lead guitar well, because nobody's like really watching you simply because you're usually you're just rhythm like you just keep everybody else on time. You add a little bit of flavor maybe, but you know that's I I agree. That's how I always thought about it, and uh, you don't have to though. I mean, it is kind of that's how it seems, and it's kind of less stressful on the front end, but. Uh, the back end, you and the drums are the foundation. Yeah, you have it, to be. It, it sounds weird if you don't have it. Yeah, and if you're yeah. off, you can notice it. Not because this is easily picked out by the sound, but when you're up by a subwoofer, you feel the bass, and you can yeah. feel when it's <laughs> you literally you can feel, feel off. Yeah, and you yeah. can feel when it's off. You can tell when it's fucked up and it's not right. And it's nice though because it gives me another. It, I, I get to see music from another like perspective like I got guitar here and I wrote, went around the circle a little bit to drums and went around the circle to keyboard and went around the circle to bass it kind of gives me a little bit of a more yeah. complete mm-hmm. picture overall and it's, it's really cool yeah. I enjoy it all I do is just <laughs> roll up a jib and play the fuck out of my instrument <laughs> like, let's do this. Nice. I have a whole room I'm finally able to have a room of instruments and it's just like my neighbors hate me <laughs> <laughs> the ones yeah. that don't live right next to me are like dude yeah uh-huh. but I don't know. I, I mean, sound ordinance is 11 p.m. Monday through Sunday. I know it. I play my motherfucking instruments. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had my run-ins with the cops for sound complaints, and they're like, you can play until 11 p.m. Yeah, oh, nice. that's the rule. Uh, and that reminds me, I forgot to do it whenever we opened, because you fucked me, right? But uh, we opened the show with uh, Dirty Company by Barry and Love. Oh, fuck uh, yeah. They played uh, just a little bit, and uh, we faded into it. Um, so was that written? It was awesome. It was oh. awesome, yeah. Um, did you uh, did you write it with them, or was that written before you came on? Well, I've known the guys that were in the band, like the, the guitarist Daniel, the bass player Zach, the original lineup, Caleb and Garrison as well. We all went to high school around each other, we're friends since we were like 15 years old. And so even though I wasn't in the band, Daniel wrote Dirty Gump in like five, six years ago when we were in high school, because they were working on harmonies and shit, and uh, so... I knew what the original drummer did, and I tried to follow it, and, but do my own thing. It was already like a an already pre written song. It's yeah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's uh, so you so you basically you had the melody, but then uh, everybody else kind of came in and like fleshed out the rest of the stuff. Yeah, I mean, I joined on drums to begin with, and so I laid down like it's crazy. I tried to be. I tried to match the shoes that I had to fill. The guy that left the, band, <laughs> the guy that moved out of state and you know left the band was yeah quite possibly the best fucking drummer I've ever seen. And it was just like, damn, those are some big shoes to fit. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> some size 16s shit. on the floor. Good God. Like, I, but I, I was like, well, fuck it, I'll try, you know? Yeah. So that's what I tried to do. Well, that's a, that's a good philosophy to have, I think, is to, to always, at the very least, try, sorry, mm-hmm. the very, very least different. try something, uh, even if you don't know if you can do it. Because, mm-hmm. who's to say, like, shit, the show even, like, we started, it was literally a matter of, me sitting down, me like, all right, I need to, I need to do something because I feel so stagnant, and mm-hmm. I don't care if, if I don't get famous off of it, someone's going to like it, even if it's just like my mom, Andrew's mom, who we know listens to the show now. Yeah, but somebody, oh, really? <laughs> but somebody enjoys it though. Yeah, yeah someone enjoys it, and that's what's important. Um, are you just? 
I lost it. It's gone. <laughs> Stopping the show so you take picture of that. I was trying not to until and you started talking about it. Yeah. You're still doing it. He was gonna stealthily do it. He yeah. stealthily took picture. Yeah, yeah. I was going to. Now the whole and world knows that well, it's on my phone. It's, it's important for like me to say that Mitch doesn't have like a smartphone. It's, no, it's, no, it's a flip phone. It is the oldest phone. In I the love world. it. I love it. I love it. Your, no, your, Ian, your Ian's phone. Got one too. Ian's got oh, one. Oh, yeah. It will outlive all of your phones. No, your phone's older than my phone. My phone's super old. Mine's like four years old. And yours is like. Ten. Mine, yeah. Mine, mine's, old. mine's still a baby. I mean, I got, Aww, like, I got like four or five months. You got a, a new one. Mm. Yeah. A new space phone. I have a rock with crayon on it. Nice. There you go. <laughs> I throw it. Sometimes it comes back. Well, I the best it app I have, on it's, it's a knockoff of that commercial with the defense app where it's like, mm-hmm. you smash them in the head. Yeah, you just like throw it but, out. But um, that's about, <laughs> the only other app I have is, um, it, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> I have no app. I don't get bothered by texts at three in the morning or yeah. random phone calls from the breathers, uh, the, breathers. the Jehovah's. <laughs> uh, you know, I noticed something that, though. Like, they don't come. I don't I was gonna, they like calling now. Yeah, I don't yeah no, they are. Door they door are. Door. It was like exactly. Yeah. It, was, it was like that TV host, you Kenneth Copeland, the, the, the preacher. <laughs> but it's Jehovah's, you know. Fuck that. <laughs> so, so wait, I have a question. Do you actually have a phone, or are you just? You know, yes, you, yeah, yes, you had that phone because you fucking yes. texted me. That's yes, what yes, I mean. Yes. <laughs> Are you literally texting me during well, the last show? Well, no, my rock has ESPN as well. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, oh. That, 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 that telepathic. No, that's that ESPN. Power. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> It's, it's telepathetic, dude, I'm telling you. Telepathetic. <laughs> telepathetic, I like that. We're going to coin so many new words on this <laughs> one. It's going to be amazing. The I'm new word excited. episode. So we, we have, we have our, our new friend Steven here. Um, let's jump over to Tess real quick. Have you... Our old friend I, I know that I noticed <laughs> that you've, you've got a couple new jobs now. Yes. Um, yeah. So you, you seem ridiculously busy. Yeah, like I, I Facebook yes. friended you like two weeks ago, and I swear all of your status updates are like I have so much stuff going. On. You only yeah. Facebook friended her two I, weeks ago. I Facebook friended her two weeks and three days. Ago. I didn't know. Oh man! Oh, oh man! Get with the times. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's funny. Like on Friday, I went to Art Walk just for fun, like with a friend, and he no asked me. Art Walk for fun. I know. Well, it's funny. He I asked knew if I'm me. drunk. He, uh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he actually asked me. He was like, "What was the last time you went to Art Walk, Art Walk for fun?" Art and I was like. Arc walk, yeah, I know. Art walk for fun, and I was like, ah, uh, never. <laughs> I've always been here for some, like, you know, business reason. Because yeah. I'm kind of a workaholic, I guess. I've noticed that. Yeah, I have two jobs now because I'm, I'm in the process of looking for a new place. And so, uh, and you need money for that. You need money no, yeah. to move out. You need money to, like, live and, and you know, survive. And survive, right. yeah. It's a weird thing. Money's an odd, odd animal. Uh, you know, I wish I had more of it, but at the same time, I wish I didn't have to like work as much to get more of it. Uh-huh. You know, it's one of those things. Like, I want all of it, but none of the work that goes into it. It's the American dream, yeah. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 what's up with me in a nutshell. So what's the new job? Mm. Um, well, I worked at a bowling alley. That's my my current job, mm-hmm. and then my second job is working at a breakfast cafe downtown. Oh, cool! Which uh, one? I want to go Gailey's. Gailey's. Yes. You're at Gailey's. So I'm at Gailey's. awesome! I'm a cashier at Gailey's. Yep. Awesome. Yep. 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 <laughs> so how do a few times I can get a table? I like that. My little place. sister used to work at Gailey's. You, you have to go yeah. during how the old week. Are you? you do. I'm 23. Yeah. Oh, okay. Really? So yeah. 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 You said little sister, that. and I was like, holy shit, is he like almost 30? <laughs> what? Fuck you. No. What's wrong no. with almost 30? I'm 23. Nothing. I mean, no, 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 it's okay. I'm a, I'm a teacher, so everyone instantly thinks that I'm married, have kids, and I'm at least 40. So. Oh, well, you are, though. You just I am, though, but I just pretend not to be. Mitch, what about Brittany? Come on, man. Brittany, we don't Your talk wife. about her on the line. <laughs> on the line? <laughs> and your three children. She's going to call me now. Oh, She's going to be like, oh, hold on. There's it's the like call. Ginger, I got ginger and Sam. It is the weirdest fucking thing how many people at my job think I'm like 35. Yeah. And That's kind of sad, though. I don't know how to feel about like, it. You deliver pizza, so when they think you're 35, you're like, what, you think I'm 35 delivering pizzas? Well, there's a lot of older dudes that work at my store that are way older than. When I, I worked for Papa John's, we had three delivery people that were over sixty-five. Yeah, Fuck. We, 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 we've got a few in that range too, definitely. Jesus that, Christ! Well, just, old man Gill was the shit. He was the best. <laughs> old man Gil. Oh wait, dude! I just realized I haven't told my racist old man story on the podcast. Oh, oh, oh no! Okay, yes, wait, yes, yes, yes. Finish, finish your I feel like I just set a really high bar with this. The meters yeah. are off the chart. <laughs> Thing. I don't want to oh, I was just gonna say, old man Gil was the shit. He was <laughs> like, 
70, 75. He had the best delivery times. He always pulled the best tips. He was the shit. He was cool as fuck and always had the right advice. And when like, people, when I was going through some trials and tribulations, you know what he told me? <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> he said, That's such old nice. man advice. He, he too. said, Stephen, really, at the end of the day, don't waste your time. Fuck him. Yeah. Nice. Fuck them. Nice. And that's that. That's and I was like, old man Gil, thank you. For <laughs> you're, that. you're the best. That's I great. love that's you. After that, he cracked open a beer and told me not to tell anybody. <laughs> in the back of the Papa John's. In the back. I was in the freezer in the, in the lock in. <laughs> We're just huddled with coats, drinking Bud Lights. And it's just like. <laughs> it's, hoping your manager doesn't walk in. It's 11 30 a.m., Gil. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Put the oh, beer down. <laughs> uh, okay, you're, you're racist old man. Uh, I'm. The, the, the old man I worked with once also gave me some great insight into his life. Oh, wait, is this the one you told me like a month or two ago? I, I, I think I've told you okay, and okay. Ian off yeah. but I don't think I've said it on the show, and it's, it's too funny not to tell okay. you. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was going to North Carolina for spring break, and uh, I was talking about it with this old guy that I work with. Uh, he's, I mean, he's, he's old, old, like, like 60, 70, maybe even 80. Uh, real old dude. And uh, so... I, I'm talking to him about my, my upcoming trip, so to speak, and he's like, oh, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm going to North Carolina for a week. we got a friend with a, with a beach house down there. We're going to go check it out. And uh, so he turns to me. He's like, oh, that's nice. I used to live in North Carolina. I was like, oh, really? You know, just kind of like, you know, talking. Because yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of time at work. I'm like, just keep the conversation. Oh, really? I'm interested in your life. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, it was a nice place. Back when the Negroes knew their place. What the <laughs> hell? Like, what in the fuck, oh dude? Oh, my God. <laughs> He always seemed like the sweetest dude, and he just <laughs> dropped that mama on me. And I'm just like, just like nodding along. Cause You're like, yep, <laughs> like, Negroes, I, right. I, I, I should say, I, I lean liberal, and I don't want to start political yeah, discussions on right. here, because that's the last thing I want to do. But I lean liberal, but a lot of my coworkers are very, very conservative. <laughs> yeah. And they're always in the back, like, in... shit-talking Obama and stuff, and I'm just sitting there. I, I just sit there and nod along, because yeah. I, I have two rules in my life. Don't talk about politics, don't talk about religion. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Safe. I, I, I agree with that. <laughs> because I, I have opinions that will make a lot of those people angry at me anyway. <laughs> so, so I just sit there and I I nod along, and they're like, yeah. man, yeah. fucking Obama, yeah. right? I'm like, yeah, fuck Obama. Obama. <laughs> totally, but deep down, totally voted like, for that dude like, twice, but no, fuck not him. Obama, no. But uh, oh, so, so you know, I'm kind of used to nodding along with conversations at work. But you know, I stick around in the room because they're not saying anything like awful. Yeah. This time I was like, yeah, okay. I think I heard someone call my name. I'm going to leave this room. <laughs> oh, right shit, now. There's a delivery I have to go. This is a conversation I cannot, in good conscience, stick around for. <laughs> well, I mean, it surprises me when like people say. Just like such extreme comments like I know, that. It's so weird. Like it's like, are you like hoping like are they just like oh. like putting themselves out there in the hopes that like you'll go, Yes, I agree with you yes. and everything's okay and Jake almost fell over and No, I almost shot my phone by a comment. Uh, Epic same anyway, Same uh, thing, continue. it doesn't yeah, matter. Whatever it is. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's still as terrifying. <laughs> um, but it, to me it like it always makes you wonder, it's like What's going through their minds when they say something like so extreme like that? Like, what were you expecting me to either go like? Because like, really, it's a fifty-fifty shot. Like, it's either going to be, oh my god, no, or oh my god, yes. Hell yeah, man, <laughs> up top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Racism. Black people, High am five. I right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Wait, right. when you say that, what? You, <laughs> hold on a second. Uh, no, I had a moment like that uh, like three days ago. I was on. No, no, it's for it, it whatever. Was four days it was, ago. It was recently. Um, <laughs> It, it was another one of those moments I have so often where someone is wrong on the internet, and I have to <laughs> tell them why they're wrong. And it, it was someone who posted some status about uh, impeaching the dictator, referring mm. to mm. not not even just like the president, but also the entirety of the government. Our, our super adored yeah. president. Keep, keeping this as non-political as possible while still being crazy political. Um, <laughs> but I, I had nothing wrong with what she had said, because it was like a status like five lines long. Um, and everything she was saying before that was perfectly fine. Like, it's her fucking opinion. You know, mm -hmm. whatever. I don't agree with it, but go right. for it. Right. I'm, I'm glad we can have these different opinions. But she hashtagged the impeach the dictator thing, and that's what got me. Oh, and God. all I said was, Harley, one, I need you to go look up the definition of dictator. Yes. Two, I'm glad we can have differing opinions and be civil about this. Right. And... And I think, and then the world it. broke. And then. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to and, argue. Oh. And I was sitting on the couch, and I was like feverishly typing on my computer. Yeah. And Sonya walks into the room. She's like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "Someone's wrong on the internet." And yeah. she's like, "Who? <laughs> Who could possibly be this wrong?" And I was like, "It's this person, and yeah. they don't know what words are, and oh they don't God. understand what they're talking about." She's like. 
just just close the computer. I was like, no, I have to tell him why. <laughs> it's, it comes to a point where it's like, when, once you cross that room, I have gone, to balance the book. It's like you yeah. can't, you, like, you must say something. No, and the worst, you have to like nip it in the bud before you say something. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the worst part was, I wasn't even like disagreeing with her on her views. Yeah. It was literally just like, it was the, the I was trying to correct her dictator. factually incorrect <laughs> things. Yeah. No, I, I, I understand completely. I have a friend who's very conservative, and I'm, of course, like you, Andrew, I'm a, I'm a political, persu- uh, liberal, avoider? liberal, liberal oh, persuasion. Okay. What was it? I said avoider. <laughs> avoider. That's what I, I, I come to the point where I kind of have oh, avoided it. Yeah. yeah, I've come to the point where I've kind of uh, avoided it. But I have this one friend who's very conservative, and she's, like, she's very, very conservative and the polar opposite of me, and I still remain friends with her because we've been friends for a very long time. But it's like... She's super mellow in how she delivers things. So she'll be like, it's cool, whatever. We should build the wall to keep the Mexicans out. You know, she's like, like that. And I'm like, wait, no, wait. It's like, wait, hang on a second. Hang on. And like she will, she'll say like really, really charged, you know, conservative things. But like really mellow, like like just super mellow. Face it. Like like the, the most recent one, and it annoyed me so much. It was a picture of the one of the uh, twin towers being attacked during okay. 9/11, and it was like in yeah. midst plane yeah. fire exploding everywhere. And she's like, just in case someone forgot. And that was the only time I've really intervened on something where I was like, when? When has someone forgotten? Unless you sustained a, a horrible head injury, who has forgotten 9 11? Like, I was like, really? I had to get like really angry with her. And she was like, well, sometimes there are people in the political world who have just kind of like forgotten. And I'm like, no, no, no one's forgotten. If Kayla. they're in the political no world, forgotten. they're not going to listen yeah. to her no anyways. One's forgotten. Exactly. They're not reading your face. See, the, <laughs> thing, the thing is, is I'm the exact opposite. I'll say very mellow shit in an extreme way like I like everybody yeah. <laughs> I think they should be equal whoa that's, whoa that's you need to tone it the fuck down yeah. Yeah. I think the taxes should be lower <laughs> that's ridiculous no, we, we are trying to, to appeal to a wide range of people on this show and you are going to make that very <laughs> no, very no, 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 my favorite thing about being Facebook friends with Steven is that he makes these Facebook posts and he, he's totally right he yeah. says shit that I agree with yeah. And I talked about this like two episodes ago. But he, he says shit I totally agree with. Like, I'm like, yeah, man, go for it. But he does it so profanely. <laughs> just like, in, not, not like in a mean way. He's just like very opinionated about it. And I respect it. I really do. I can't help it, dude. They come <laughs> and, out. And he does it. And I, I don't know if he's just like tired people out and they just like accept him for what he is now. Or if he's just not friends with anybody that gives enough of a shit to argue with him. Yeah. The way I see it is I wake up some days and it's like, okay, 2,000 friends on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, damn. Let's see how many <laughs> I can. All right. I'll, I'll look at my watch and I'll be like, it's like, all right, it's 1030. I want to see how many of these motherfuckers I can lose by noon. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll post a... Oh, God. Will you post, like, pictures of oh. dead babies that you're hiding from me? What the hell, No, not man? like that, but, like, there was one day there's, like, you know that... The, the video games Fallout. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You know their style of art with the happy guy? Yeah. Well, he's... Like kicking, and there's a like baby. a pregnant oh. girl, and there's like oh a sign god. that says "baby," and like oh my god. all I did, I, was, I shared the photo, and it said, "This is how many fucks I give." <laughs> and, uh, I got mixed responses, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> to say the least. You're you're an instigator. Oh my god! You <laughs> literally just put you you like throw your line out there, and you wait, you wait for someone to bite. Yep. But I could not help. But lay my eyes on this photo and immediately lose my shit with laughter. I cannot help it. Every time I look at it, I've seen it a hundred times. Well, like the guy, regardless of what he's, he's doing, just like, he always looks so happy about it. <laughs> yeah. Like that's how he's drawn. No he's, fucks. he's very happy. No fucks given. Yeah, I mean I just I, I can't <laughs> express enough how much I just love to keep like religion and politics out of my yeah. daily life. Oh, yeah. I, uh, As we discussed it at length. I yeah, I mean that. I even I even made a point like on voting day this last this last year, uh, you know, they give out the, the, the pins and the stickers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, I voted, and I just immediately got rid of mine. Yeah, I'm like, like, I'm not going to wear this because everyone's going to be like, oh, cool, who'd you vote for? Right. I'm like, nope, stepping away from this. Right. I, w- I would rather people think I didn't vote than I told people just... I abstained. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's a sexual not, thing. So I, yeah. I, I, I'm practicing I, I abstinence. Do it. Or, or, or be like, oh, I voted Green Party. Political like, Yeah. I like it. 
yeah. really funny. I voted for someone who wasn't even up for because, election. Because, because no, one, no one even really could, like, uh, oh, Should I, be told I, I, I nominated, nominated myself. I wrote in Tony Stark. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I, I really just wanted this pin. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my, my mom went to Washington, uh, like, a year ago, and uh, she sent me in the she mail. She told on you, didn't she? <laughs> she sent me in the mail a, uh, an Obama re-election t-shirt, which is great coming from her because she's super conservative. Yeah, she's, yeah, always, yeah. she's always like, I can't believe you. But we, we somehow get along. So it was kind of like, you know, I, I, was, at, I was in Washington. Like I saw this, so I, I got it for you. But, you know, I love it. It's a cool shirt. I, I never wear it in public. <laughs> all, all I'm doing is asking for it. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to run into, like, one vocal guy at the right. checkout lane at the grocery oh, yeah. store. Or, He's got love on you know, yeah. see it. Just, and... just anybody. Anybody in the world is going to be like, really? You voted for that terrorist? Yeah. Like, oh, and you're God. like... I'd rather uh, just walk around in a football Obama shirt. I when I was in high school still. There because I, I, I've, just, I've never met a Bears fan 18, that was that aggressive to me. Oh, yeah. right. like, yeah. Really? A Packers fan? Really? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like that causes the most tension in our in our roommate ship, though. Fuck the Packers! Fucking Packers t-shirt. <laughs> What's wrong with the Packers? I mean, the Packers. Uh, 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 honestly, if yeah. I need to leave. I need to leave. Uh, honestly, <laughs> the state of America no, being what it is, I would almost be less surprised if someone was was more mad about a football shirt I was wearing than a politics shirt. That's fair. At this point, I almost expect someone to get more riled up about like my football choice yeah. as opposed to politics. <laughs> well, I remember, because I think well, America likes football more than any of that right now. If a government shutdown happened in any other country, I think there might be riots. Yeah. yeah. We're all yeah. yeah. Every I, Most of us are just like, <laughs> thank God there's a game on. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to call in the like work Cardinals the other day. World Series. At least oh we still God. got wait, our wait, guns, wait. am I right? Wait, wait, wait. I, I tried to call in the work the other day because I woke up and I found out the government was shut down. <laughs> Did so you try to use that I called them. I'm like, hey, I'm not coming in today. Well, why? The government shut down. They they said no. You'll, you'll, you're going to be here. And I was just like, damn it. God what, damn help it. me there. Who is going to govern us? Who? Well, see, I was that guy. I, I coined this phrase earlier, like a political avoider. Yeah. And I didn't know anything about it. All I had seen were these I don't know half, anything like, about Facebook it still. things. Yeah, and then finally, like, I ran into two people who were like just talking and talking mm-hmm. about. It. I'm like, hi. So what happened? Yeah. I, I, no, I still <laughs> have no idea. This. And then I, I got the whole no idea. Oh, what? How dare you? And I was just kind of like, well, bye. No, <laughs> and this, turn around. That's why I like. Okay. I I have the problem, and it's not. It's it's hardly ever political because generally when it's something political or religious, I let go. On the internet, yeah. yeah. I, I just, I'm like, you know what? Go for it. I'm not here to stand in your way. Get your shit out. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't, I don't even tell them to go away. I, I just drop the fucking thing. Like, I get out. I don't um, tell them to go away. I just leave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. Um, but I do have a problem with t- telling people when they're wrong on the internet. Yeah, We've all been there. We, yeah. Yeah. I tell yeah. every person I find that they're wrong on the internet. Yeah, exactly. Every time. Even no matter what they're Without saying. Without fail, no matter what, uh, and I will provide sites to prove it. Exactly. Multiple cross-references. How is that not on a t-shirt? You're wrong on the internet. You're wrong, wrong on, on the internet. Oh, this should be. Oh, man. <laughs> but, like, because, because I have this, this problem... I make myself because I don't like talking out of my ass either. I don't. I don't like pulling bullshit numbers and bullshit quotes, whatever. You know, seventy eight so, percent of all statistics bullshit. are made up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or um, bullshit. So I go out of my way whenever something even mildly piques my interest. I will fucking drain time into studying something, dude. Yeah. Because I, every, because I know it's gonna happen where I'm gonna be on the internet and someone's gonna be like this thing, this thing. They're gonna be wrong, and I'm gonna tell them why they're wrong. In, in my lifetime, I have no doubt. Done more research for the sake of winning internet arguments <laughs> than I have for any school yeah, assignment exactly. ever. I'm sorry you have I'm to gonna get this those moment, motherfuckers next time. Exactly. I'm gonna get them. You yeah. lose it and you're like, nope, I'm studying. Next time I'm gonna get them. <laughs> it's like it's a well, battle. How do you cover it? Do you expertise it one field, jack of trades? Um, wow. I because well, I specialize in bullshit. Like here's my, <laughs> bullshit. here's my favorite quote: When you're canoeing up a tree and get a flat tire, how many days are left in the glass of milk? I'm confused. Purple. How do you respond to it? <laughs> Don't. That's how. Purple because yeah, ice cream doesn't have bones. Yeah, exactly. Who gives a shit? Oh, I never finished this beer. I still have half of this toe head and it should be gone. Yeah, but you came in here with like a 40 of old English and it's like gone now. It was only half of it. It was only half of 40. I was Um, traveling with an open, yes. No, but I wasn't driving, so. Yeah, exactly. Fuck you. I didn't drink it on the road. It was in the trunk. I wish you were here. I covered my tail. We were talking about the cop story. Oh, you want to hear? Let's. No, yeah, let's do it. All right, so. We've already told ours. So, to skip the beginning, the whole prequel. (laughs) No, no, the whole preface to the story. Um,. I happen to have a giant bag of alfalfa grass, feed grass for cattle, 
because somebody somewhere. I'm gonna got, stop you there. <laughs> Why? <laughs> this dude. Skipping a whole. I, I feel like this. I feel like it shouldn't be this hard of a question. To okay. No, so so this dude that narked on me in high school for okay. drinking alcohol okay. for my first time ever. I got suspended. Whatever. Da- way down yeah. the line, it turns out that this dude got ripped off. Yeah. And what he got was a giant old bag of alfalfa grass instead of some other or some sort of grass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, whatever that might, might be. Might smoke it. Might so, not smoke so, it. So. I knew what cattle feed looked like. Yeah. I've, I've yeah. lived on a farm before, and I told him, I was like, this is, this is obviously alfalfa grass that's been compressed into bricks. It is. It was in a, like a bunch of little like three-ounce bricks, yeah. Yeah. like little squares. And I asked him if I could keep it. He was like, well, I'm not going to do shit with it. And um, I was in the passenger seat of my buddy. <laughs> so I, I have this giant bag of, of quote-unquote grass. It's yeah. Really grass. It really Literally grass. grass. Yeah, like, and so... Um, there's not no need for quote-unquote. This yeah, is actual this is, grass. Yeah, this is actual there, No, no. Grass. Dude, you can... Like... Th- this, this was the primo fucking feed grass for cows. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, Betsy would have loved it. Anywho, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm riding in my buddy's car, and... Um, he he has a tail light out and he no he has a tail light out and the license plate light out. Oh god. Um, so he's so asking for so it. So we get pulled over and I'm like, dude, I'm gonna have some fun with this. And so I stuff it <laughs> I stuff it down the front of my jeans really hard. And like so it's like halfway in my jeans and halfway out. Like obviously sticking but out. it's obviously <laughs> yeah. bulging, right? And so the, there's two cops, one goes to the driver's side, I'm on the passenger side, he walks up, and my I crack my window's slightly cracked and uh he starts asking me questions, and I'm just being purposely snarky. Yeah. Just rude, and he's just like, you need to get out of the car, you know, and he pats me down, and he feels like, he's like, and what's this? And I, <laughs> I just, I look over at my friend, and I just shout, oh no, not my grass! <laughs> <laughs> not my grass! <laughs> and, uh, well, long story short, no trouble, because they analyzed it, and it... Long story deep. short, I went to jail for a day. <laughs> no, 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 uh... They they inspected it. They analyzed that shit and did they smell it and be like, "This doesn't it's, smell." Like it's alfalfa. It, it, it was. It was. It was. Yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> but I, I wanted to have my fun. Yeah, and you had it. God damn it. Yeah. See, you my grass. You, you do that and you get away with it because they analyze that shit. I try that and I go to jail for five to ten. Because I don't. They have can't. No, no, don't show it. You have alfalfa alpha grass. Yeah. <laughs> if you have alfalfa alpha alpha grass, remember this. God help you. No, I, I have terrible luck with police. Just, I may as well be a black you, man. You go back and listen. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. There Ooh. it is. We're getting a little close to that line now, I think. I'm alright with it. <laughs> it's, my it's, it's your podcast, I don't yeah, care. I'm talking about it. Talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing racist about it. You look me in the face and you tell me that the popo doesn't pull over black guys more often than white guys. I, I wouldn't know. I've gotten got pulled over as much I will as my tell black you. friends. I will tell you that long hair and piercings that and tattoos. African American gentlemen seem less likely to tip me to delivery drivers. Do they? Yes. Huh. That's that's that's. You a should you should fact. go like three months recording the statistics. I think someone in my store has actually done it. <laughs> yes. Because this because is they're that this, this is a, is reg- a pie graph this somewhere. Is like a registered phenomenon. Like what we talking about in the store. Like, dude, I'm not racist, but I almost never get tipped. Like, I'm not racist. Yeah, I'm, but I'm racist. racist. Truth be told, I am not racist at all, but my sense of humor surely is. Yeah. Oh, no, exactly. I, did, like, I, did I can't help it. I have no prejudices, but damn it, I do love a good joke. One question. Yeah, that's I a good way of putting it, though. Tess actually, yeah. currently lives with a very, very kind, bearded black gentleman. Oh, Does he tip? He is a delight. I, I like him a lot. You've met him? We met him like three seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But he, he okay. gave off a very positive energy. Yeah, I loved him. yeah. He's, he's, um, he's a comic, just like, I guess, so, me. Yeah. So, you were going to bring... Tess was going to bring an, another guest with I her today, but she did not. Was that Was that the... The nice bearded black gentleman was it JD? It was JD. Yeah, I know that motherfucker. Was, was yeah, to, apparently yeah, JD I mean, knows I didn't Steven. Know yeah. him. I didn't know For like that. three years now. How do you know? How do you know him? Wait, what's his last name? Let's make sure it's the same. JD. Word gets around. Uh, I well, uh, well actually, dirty blonde like, hair, kind of longish. No, well, facial beard, hair, beard, um, short. He used to be big in the uh, EDM scene. <laughs> I think this might be a different yeah, electronic. Tess looks confused. Well, I mean, I'm loving this conversation. No, this you, almost, you almost had me with the EDM scene. I don't know what EDM stands for. Like, oh, I don't know. Electronic like dance. Drum and bass wow. and stuff. Mm, probably not. That's not I his don't know. thing. So. I've only met one JD that fits that description. Did he? Okay, did, was he um, president of the Growl? 
uh, MSU the Radio. The growl? MSU yeah, Radio. Oh. That no. There's a reason that I don't know what that I, is. I, I don't know. I knew him from getting drunk and playing beer pong. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, how is that? Not like that guy. Like, not I mean, like I don't know, once I'm a year ago, but like yeah, continually. Yeah. I don't know. I, I know. I know. He goes downtown quite a lot. I've seen him on a lot of shows and a lot of different downtown events. Yeah, I don't, I don't, that may not be the same JV, actually. Know. Come to think of it. What's That's disappointing. I was hoping for like one of those small. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. be incredibly happy. The only guy I knew from MSU Radio graduated uh, not too long ago, Jonathan Limp. Yeah. Not to know if you're from. No. He has an unfortunate yeah. last name. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he did like the uh, radio broadcast and that shit. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was quite fun. I, he had me come in there one time, and it was so hard to contain my my uh, extra verbiage. Yeah. And my oh, topic oh, yeah. choices. You exactly. Know. You have to because it's. it's College funded or whatever you can't. It was on a college radio station. I could not drop any bombs of any <laughs> nature. <laughs> you couldn't. You couldn't. You know, whatever. Oh what no! It you? was so hard because <laughs> I had already day drank a little bit before we went in there, so it was just. Like, oh, okay. So you showed up to this totally dry campus radio interview, <laughs> drunk as piss. That was funny. <laughs> but my whole band was there, so I figured they'd have my back. But they were drunk with me too. <laughs> I didn't calculate that. You didn't, you didn't plan I didn't this out prepare. very well. All I knew is I was like, hey, it's 10 in the morning. <laughs> I have this beer. We have a show at 2, but we're not playing. We're talking, so we don't need to function as highly. There is a, we don't need our higher functioning cognitive abilities for this. <laughs> I, I, lived with, um, I, I lived with a guy and a girl before we moved into here who got engaged and then married while we were all living in the same house. And uh, the guy's name is Pear. I won't say his last name because he has a big boy job, but his name is Pear. <laughs> um, and I know Pear. You do know Pear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 Talk about it. They're connected. Anyway, uh, so one th- there was a time where right before I got employed, like okay, so I was unemployed for about six months mm-hmm. because for some reason, and it's still it's still happening. Like I'm actively still searching for a job because I hate my fucking job. Yeah. And for whatever reason, this town does not want to hire me. Mm-hmm. I've applied to so many places, and no one calls me back. Even if I call them, like, hey, what's up? How's your yeah. resume going? Um, anyway, so there's six months where I was unemployed, and I was, you know, making ends meet in various ways. I wasn't, like, blowing dudes on the street, but, you know. <laughs> uh, Suck your dick for crack! Exactly. <laughs> Suck your dick for rent, more like it. Um, but I wasn't doing any of that, but I was making ends meet. <laughs> Is that less and quality? I had, or? <laughs> and I had enough money to... Uh, Pay rent, get food, and then I had a little bit of extra spending cash. And nine times out of ten, I would spend the extra cash on booze. Yeah. Like beer, liquor, whatever. I remember those days. Yeah, I like booze. so good. Oh, my God. Oh, I can't do that anymore. Um, I love booze. Yeah, it's, it's totally <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> Really? So, um, anyway, one pair recalls it as he woke up one morning at, like, 8 a.m. And I don't think it was 8, because me getting up at 8 is ludicrous, first of all. But he says it was 8 a.m. And he goes into the kitchen, and he turns, like, we had a tiny-ass kitchen, and it was very closed off from the rest of the house, like a tiny fucking door frame. And he turns the corner, and I'm standing there, like, making breakfast, and I just have a beer, like, like a bottle of beer. And I just turn to him, and I'm like, what's up? <laughs> and he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, drinking. <laughs> It's 8 a.m. and I'm drinking. This is what it looks like. This isn't what it looks like. I start like making fucking pancakes, drinking a beer, making beer cakes. And beer cakes. Actually, that sounds really good. Beer cakes, yeah. Does it? Have you ever yeah. had? Oh, that would be great. Yeah. No. Yeah. You're like fine. Deep fry them and Jack Daniels. Yeah. Ooh. Can you do that? You can't. <laughs> no, they did. They no, did they it on Epic, epic, epic Meal Time. time. Yeah. Time, man. Well, I've seen the Jack Daniels maple syrup. Mm-hmm. Which sounds like a great idea. Though. I've tried it. It's like the easiest thing in the world to make. No? Woo! I love whiskey and I love maple syrup, but god damn. At well, 7.30 in the like, morning? <laughs> <laughs> My cool. dad's family is up from, uh, up from Wisconsin, and we go to the games. Uh, whenever we get a chance, we love to go to the Packers games like on their turf. And Packers. apparently, like, some people... <laughs> Again? Because normally it's so cold. Like, Packers. some people, like, actually fill up their, like, little... They're like flasks with like half Jack Daniels, half maple syrup. Wow. And the only point of this is just to keep your belly warm enough so you can get through the game. <laughs> the only problem is halfway through the game, you're like, yeah! Drop this piss. <laughs> Go Packers! Go get them! Is that you, why the Packers crowds are ridiculous? Cheese. Oh, well, like, I, I went to a show. <laughs> they do not have filters at all. There was this glorious moment where I was up, uh, we had uh, four spots, but because of 
the tickets, only like two of us could be in one spot, two of us were like on the other side of the field. Oof. So I'm with my sister, who's maybe like 16 by this point. Oh no. And we're all <laughs> hanging out, and then there was this, I forget what player they were yelling at, but it was like was two rows behind us. Rest? No. <laughs> it was like, Rapper! and they just were like, hey, get your balls out of your purse and play the damn game! <laughs> <laughs> And I just turn around and just go, yeah! <laughs> and my sister's just going, <gasps> <laughs> this is why I can't go to sporting events. I've been, I've been to so few sporting events that I can count them on probably one hand. <laughs> Definitely two hands. Like, I, I can't remember all of them. I'm going to hold you to that. But they were all when I was younger. All I've right. never been to a major sporting event. That's a lie. I went, to a, I went to one war, Royals game when I lived in Kansas City. Uh, Excluding that, I've never been to a major sporting <laughs> event where I could drink. And I don't trust myself. Because I would go, and I would drink, and I would get shitty. And I'd start yelling at the people who were doing wrong. Like, if I went and saw a Rams game, it would be mayhem. To so go to a hockey game. I would get thrown out. That's because the crap. I would just <laughs> yell at Sam Bradford and yell at everyone. You guys ready for another Justin story? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh God. Uh, so, of course. For, um... Steven, Justin Gorman is a friend of ours who... Uh, who, for some reason, we feel fine dropping his last Yeah, name. I'm actually going to beep that out when no, I do won't. this, because I didn't actually reach... No, I will. I'll, right. I'll beep it. I'm excited uh, to hear He's it. a friend of ours who graduated a year or two ago, but he has a big boy job. He makes, like, way more money than any of us ever will, yeah. and he drank a fuck-ass ton in college, and he still came out with, like, a 3.8 or a 3.9. Something like he that. He was a boss. He, oh, yeah. wait, uh, he, play, he, get, he played hard. So We so, need to have like a big portrait of him mm, here in this. No, we put it right there, and it'll be him being like, this oh, yes. <laughs> it has to be that expression. <laughs> the title underneath it should say Director of Fun. Director <laughs> of Fun? <laughs> no, no, it'll say Gorman's number one, because that's another story. Yeah. That was. So, uh, that we've talked it's about. Like a, it's like. We have two leaps to do. I do. So, yeah. so uh, a, a little oh, bit shit, ago, I guess, I guess like two years, uh, I went to a, a Royals game with Justin and another friend of ours, and uh, of course he was getting drunk at the game. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was this before or after he was 21? I don't know. It, 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 was, it, it was only just a year or two ago, so I think it was legit, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, it, 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 it wasn't really a problem while he was at the game, like he was clearly... Yeah. Yeah, he got it. his shit. But, but there, were, there were no problems at the game. The problem came when we were driving back from the game, and uh, we stopped oh, at a no. Wendy's to get some food. Oh, God damn it. And so our friend went to the bathroom. She was, <laughs> she was a girl, so she was in the girls' bathroom. The men's bathroom was wide open. And uh, Justin, the great judge that he is, decides he's going, we're, we're waiting outside by the car for her. And instead of going back inside to the Wendy's bathroom... He just go ahead and starts taking a whiz. Oh, Christ. Next to the car in the parking spot uh, next to ours. Yes. I was like, really? Really, you're doing this? Gorman, it's like literally <laughs> 30 steps that way. Just, god damn it. And hey, you're bad at this. Then a guy I don't care starts anymore. walking out of Wendy's. And I'm watching him. And I'm like, oh, God, please don't be coming to that car. Please don't be coming to that car. <laughs> Gorman stops pissing on the car maybe five seconds like before the guy gets there. No, I, I don't know if he cut it off or not. I don't okay. think he did. I think he just finished. Oh, okay. And then stepped away. That was that guy's car. And uh, I, he did not notice that Justin oh had just finished pissing on it. <laughs> God, God damn it. It's like, you are such a monster, and I am so glad that, that guy didn't notice that. <laughs> oh, man. While, while we're telling terrible, <laughs> terrible passenger stories real quick, I have an Andrew story. Yeah. It's, oh, man. Oh. You, you, it, you know what one it is, too, don't you? I feel so I'm, bad about this. I'm story. going to ruin this you. This is such a horrible story. So, this is back when we lived up in Liberty. Which is a suburb of Kansas City. I feel really bad about Kansas this. Kansas City, was so so yeah. So uh, it was me and me and our fifty viewers. No, hundred. It's hundred, ah! including my mom, yeah. including your mom, <laughs> and my mom. And I'm about to say a word that's yes. going to make her just ashamed of me. Perfect. Um, so anyway, we're we're in Liberty, and this was like, was this before college? This was high school, I think. Yeah, this was okay. high school, I and was I was I was driving us around. This is when I had my Cavalier, and it was me, Andrew, I think Justin, and Caitlin Lava. I want to say it was Sarah, actually. No, it might have been Sarah. Uh, anyway. I'm so sure she listened. She can verify yeah, this. Exactly. We, we, it was a full car, regardless. We just and got a collar. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> it was um, her. So, you're live on the air. So we have, a, we have a full car, and we're driving. It, it's like fucking 11 o'clock at night, and it's Liberty. Fucking no one's out at 11 o'clock at night. Right. There's fucking nobody in the town. So we pull up to a red light, and we're not in the turn lane. We're in the, the go straight lane. 
But one lane to the right is the turn lane. Okay. And after we pull up, we're stopped there waiting for the light to turn green. This gentleman in a, in a truck, I believe, pulls up in the turn that. lane to the, next, to the right of us, and I don't notice it. I'm like, oh, it's a car, and immediately forget. And all, my hard. windows are down. And, and he's sitting there, and I'm like talking to people, whatever. Andrew's really quiet in his seat, and he's just looking at this car. And he's not drunk, he's sober, he's not under any like ill effects of anything. And out of nowhere, like, as I'm talking to someone, he yells out the window, Right turn on red, faggot! Right at him! And, 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 and he turns oh, to me after he says this, because that guy's windows are down too, and he says, Sparky, go! And it's still, <laughs> it's still a red light, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna go and get a ticket! It's Drive. a red light! Drive and fast. he's literally telling me to go, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna go! And the guy's like looking around like, who the fuck just said that? Like looking at yeah. the car, like trying to figure out which one of us said it, and the light turns green, and I just fucking floor it. I'm like, I have to get out of here. I can't do this anymore. And he's laughing, and he's laughing his ass off, being like, oh, I'm so funny! And I'm like, you're a motherfucker. I feel you almost got so bad about that in retrospect. <laughs> Not even because I yelled at that guy, but because I said that word. Oh. I'm like, I'm so much better than that. I can't believe I ever did that. There, there are better jokes to have oh. been made. Oh, That's and, intense. See, I, I, I normally use my voice Absolutely instead horrible. of a car horn. Instead of blaring on the horn, I just shout shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get out of the fucking way! Insulting lineage, you know. You know but yeah, like, you're about to the whore. No biggie. <laughs> this is why we don't like the French! No, I'm just playing. This is why your mom's No, I'm just playing. Chair. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I've had three cars where the horn didn't work, so I had to be loud. <laughs> so, <laughs> when assholes like, cut me yeah. off, I'm just like... The, the New Englander comes out of me because I grew up in Connecticut and I come out, so... But I thought people in Connecticut were, like, really polite but very racist. No, they're not racist. Really like it's the opposite. They're just fine. They're just, they're just, they're just so they're not of, very racist, but they're No, because there's a whole lot of See, other... They just like there's tennis. a lot of diversity they're up like, there. I mean, you're not that oh, far okay. from Boston. <laughs> they just so. like to They're just, uh... No, they're, it's fast and very rude. Mm. Very to the point. Okay. And if not, they're just like, well, then fuck you. Yeah. You know, pretty quick, but... I try not to be that rude. <laughs> no, that's good. It is yeah. kind of fun, though. Andrew may have passed you a little bit in that one instance. But I, sometimes, sometimes I'll yell stuff <laughs> like, uh, like sometimes there'll be nice people walking, and I'll just be like, you know, hey, baby, have you ever had your butthole licked by a fat guy in an overcoat? Or you That's know, a legitimate question. You know, or... Uh, well, someone dropped a Kevin Smith reference, and it wasn't yeah, me. Exactly. <laughs> you know, or, uh, Mark it down. Right now. <laughs> something about how I bet they love the dick. You know, yeah, I'll say that to everybody. Right. I bet you love the dick for yeah. no reason. It's a nice night. I'm driving by. It's a nice night. I feel like yelling. I bet you love the dick. Or sometimes <laughs> I'll give him good life advice, like, <laughs> uh, like go find a good doctor. It's like, uh, he's gr don't, don't I don't know. I, like don't smoke. Year. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like don't forget your vitamin D. Uh, don't <laughs> smoke crack. Uh, <laughs> If, if oh, you, okay. you know, it's life advice. That's Maybe good. try watching the news once in a while. No, it's like we were at 1984 recently and we found this really awesome pinball game yes. called Black Knight 2000. And it was one of these ones where it was made oh. in like the late 80s. Was that Mark and Morris? Morris? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Close stuff. No, it was like obviously it's the made in like, that movie today. That's kind of odd. That's weird. It is I weird. like that movie though. That's I never saw it. Um, it always reminds me of A Knight's Tale. Yeah, I like that one too. <laughs> I like a nice tail. I saw a nice tail. I liked it. I never saw it like that. Anyway, so we were in 1984, which is a, for those of you who don't know, 1984 is a place in Springfield where you pay $5 to get in and they have a shit ton of like old arcade video games. Shout out to 1984. Yeah, exactly. A bunch of old arcade games. Yeah, old arcade games plus pinball. We're in a feud. What? I like the rival, the, the slight yeah. little bit more. The bar, the College Street barcade. Oh, bar I don't think that's actually oh. a rival. I don't think it's a rival. I wouldn't because no. I, I love the barcade. I do. Barcade's yeah, great. I do like 1984 for the sheer amount of games. Yeah, yeah. the sheer amount. And oh, yeah. like, like I'll go to 1984 if it's like 3 p.m. in the afternoon. No, no, but no. I'll go to Barcade on like Friday night, Saturday. I also like the music of it better in uh, 1984. No, honestly. no, sometimes. Barcade's yeah. awesome. They rock this like. Oh, I still so out of Barcade, dude. It's, it's so out of place it. because you go to Barcade and you're like, oh, they'll probably play like like underground like weird video game they play shit. They play like straight like street thug music yeah. and fucking pop. <laughs> or it's so awesome. 
It's made for me. So anyway, we need anyway, to go and go one of these nights, man. I, yeah, we, we need I to go. I literally again. texted you the past four times I've went, and you never respond. Well, sometimes I'm working. <laughs> it was at like eleven thirty. Let's see. It's not in our dirty laundry in front of Christ's sake, ladies. Okay, so anyway, we, we found this pinball game, Black Knight two thousand. And why was I talking about this? I'll change this. <laughs> Sorry, that's no. Just change books. I don't All right. So you were going along with like the advice and yelling things at cars. I'm going to continue on. Um, <laughs> I was. Wait, oh, I remember. Oh, I remember. Oh, no, you can continue. You said. Oh, you said. Forget, bro. No, I'll just wait here. No, remember. Rem- just think about it while I say it. So, remember. You mentioned giving out good life remember. advice. Remember. This game was awesome by itself because it had really awesome music that sounded it like did. Rush. Like it wasn't Rush, but it oh, sounded like. I Rush. found the soundtrack nice. on YouTube. Yeah, you and it's nice. awesome. It's so good. That's awesome. But it, it was like, it, it was just a great pinball game. It was and so whenever. I didn't notice it until right before I left, but whenever it's just in standby mode, whenever no one's playing it and it's going through its like normal LED like words, whatever, it's so old that one of the messages it put was winners don't do drugs. I remember that! And if you've <laughs> ever been in 1984, aside from like the plethora of eight-year-olds who were in there with their moms, everyone else is like a 20-something-year-old pothead who's just like <laughs> fucking video game. <laughs> you know what the arcades originally were? 20 year old pie. Exactly, yeah, yeah. playing video games. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, okay, so. Alright, so ahead. I was driving either back to St. Louis or back here, and it was late. It was maybe like 11 30. I'd been up all day, up all night, and I'm just exhausted. And it's one of those moments where I'm like driving and I'm like, uh oh, you know, I need something to wake me up. That's so literally I, every time I drove back here, like yeah. back from here when I was driving back and forth every weekend. Yeah, I remember I was just like I pass out days. every fucking time. So I swing by McDonald's going, all right, I, I, food will help wake me up, whatever. And I'm just, I'm at that point where my wit is just so sarcastic and I don't even care anymore. So I give my order, I pay my thing. There's one giant truck in front of me and it's the stereotype cliche douchebags. There are two guys, their truck is incredibly tall it's that like it's almost a boat in the water it's the two guys one of them's got a sideways cap the other one's got his collar pop oh my god i want to be the best this is the yes. stereotypical <laughs> thing i would kick them in their nuts i would go out it kick them bad. in their nuts and then leave these are like all the cliches you can guarantee their names were chad and brad <laughs> wait chad and brad i can guarantee you that was their names so it's finally, Brad, like Chad and, and Brad, Chad and Brad, <laughs> Brad's Brad. So Chad finally, like Brad, Brad's this <laughs> itty bitty blonde girl working at McDonald's, like reaches up, she's like, "Here's your food," and she's like, "Thanks, man." Pull them, go, woo, yeah, Peel out like a, and I'm so, I'm like, why? I'm right next to like Bet the window. Hold huge. on, <laughs> I'm like, you stole my thunder. I'm, I'm, I'm like over. right there, and I just like, I know my window's been rolled down the whole time, and I just. Been, I could care less, and I just go, man. I bet their penises are huge. Well, you know, <laughs> I bet you projected it to a point where people heard you. And though. so I pull up, and I realize that the person serving me food isn't the little girl anymore. I'm like, oh, what happened? I'm like, yeah, she heard, <laughs> <laughs> and she agrees. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's awesome it's as fuck. Dead. I hate that. It's huge. Truth be told, though, if I was going to get a pickup truck, I guess I would need a huge one. That's yeah, <laughs> but you don't get your McDonald's and be like, Wee! I might just because I had a truck like that. See, this is the thing. They, like, to get a truck that's that big, you have to spend money on, like, body kits and yeah. fucking oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And shit like that. If I got a truck, I wouldn't have money for that. Right. Like, I, would, I don't think I would want it, but even if I did want it, I would, like, be buying food. Right. And oh, yeah. not that. Right. I don't understand why they spend so much money on it. I, I think for me, one car thing people, I, man. Yeah, I'll car get people. It. Oh my gosh! I remember one time there was a. I remember seeing like a real decked out truck, yeah. and it actually had like what what looked like dangling testicles. Yeah. And, like from. <laughs> well, the like shit, you can buy them. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, yeah, I've seen those, and I'm just like, truck nuts. really? Is it like already like you? Yep. It's pretty obvious you have a small dick and you're projecting it because you have this gigantic truck. I immediately think of that shit. Yeah, like you have a sack and it's like, why? What is it's the point like, of nice this? It's just like, scrotum, <laughs> yeah. no, nice scrotum, bro. No, this is literally <laughs> shake his hand. That's that's why I love truck nuts because I feel like they're... The, is that the same truck, truck nuts? No, no. Truck yeah, nuts. They're, called, they're called truck nuts. I feel like they're the greatest joke ever played on anybody because people who buy truck nuts are like, yeah, I'm a man. But they're they're made to symbolize that your truck is an extension of your penis. Yep. It, it might as well just be something that's like like just a name tag you stuck in your car. It's like, hi, my name is Douchebag. Like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or do you, like, you, you, 
think you're buying like the coolest shit ever when really all you're doing is put a, putting a target on your back that says, right. nobody talk to this guy, he's a dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> or better yet, he's super insecure. Yeah. That's, that, dick, to me, that's big. what it is. Don't go home with this Very guy. Yeah. If you're walking out of the bar with this guy and you sit down in this truck, go back inside. Yes. Vain a headache. <laughs> Find out someone there. else. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I, I have a solution to that. Yes. <laughs> Wait, a solution to what? To the, the truck nuts. Okay. Instead of buying them for a pickup truck. Yeah. Do any of you have any wankster friends? Uh, why uh, that just I have one. Well, See, no, what think, I, I'm, I'm, no, no. Here's, the, here's the best thing. You think I'm a wankster? I have friends who are wanksters. Yeah. But, so, compare okay. that. <laughs> so, so let's, let's take one of those. What okay. you do is you buy some truck nuts. But you take it to one of like the the steel or uh, one of the manufacturing places here in town and get it like electroplated with chrome. Oh, God. So you chrome the, the truck nuts. Oh, you hang them on a sick. chain. Give it to your wigger friend. <laughs> <laughs> See if he wears it around town. Hey, look, <laughs> look, look! If the dude in uh, oh what was uh, the fucking movie with James Franco and the dude with sideburns and Natalie Portman, Your Highness? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, he cuts a Minotaur's dick off and wears oh it at. Because he couldn't sever the horns for a trophy, so he's like, so I'm going like, to cut well, his dick off. Good <laughs> yep. So instead of having a minotaur dick, you have a, a chrome-plated truck nuts. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever. This whole idea makes me want to like go out and buy like a super tiny car, like a Mini Cooper or like like a Volkswagen Beetle, <laughs> so that yes. all of the ladies assume I have a massive dick because I'm not compensated But see, anything. that's the double standard, though, because anytime I see a Mini Cooper, I'm like, that guy's a fag. <laughs> or he's driving his girlfriend's car. <laughs> or he's driving his girlfriend's <laughs> car. It's funny, I, ha- I have guy friends who are like, I so want a Mini Cooper. I saw a Mini like, Cooper well, six No, this is the thing. They're adorable. Yeah, exactly. yeah. No, they're adorable, and they act like, they in complete fairness, they're really good cars. They are. Like, they if are. I had a choice between, like, a vet or some, like, awesome muscle car and a Mini Cooper, right now, I'd be like, Mini Cooper. Yeah, they're they're I can't afford to have a right, muscle yeah. car. I would take a Mini Cooper every day, because that's, like... 30 extra dollars in my pocket for I not am, having to get gas. I am totally secure enough in myself to drive a Mini Cooper. I think I, 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 yeah. think I could buy one and drive around. I could if they How much easier move. is parking all of a sudden? It's like, yeah. I have a tiny car that fits everywhere. You never have this that moment. This is fantastic. You never have that moment where you pull up to a parking spot where two assholes have like shrunk your parking spot. Yep. Yep. You're like, oh well, I can still get in there. And you just slip in. The only way I could do it is if we took the front seat out and I drove it from the back seat. <laughs> oh, because you're like eight feet tall. It wouldn't work, man. Because even if I got that great parking spot, I still am going to get no, fucked. Just get, yeah. just get a convertible. Just get a convertible. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mini Coopers are the Astro Glide of cars. They don't look like a cat. Oh, oh, right. oh my god. Oh my god. That's so right. I'm oh, offended. Man. I'm offended. <laughs> this show is terrible. You say horrible things here, I'm leaving. I need a black and mild now. Scandalous. You need a black and mild now. I can't smoke anymore. Or how about those tiny little smart cars? They're like, no, smart those cars. are dumb. Smart cars? I like smart cars. Hey, they have a great how modular you design. Hey, they, they have a fantastic <laughs> modular design. <laughs> <model. laughs> I'm not even kidding. Hear me out. <laughs> no, no, seriously, as an, uh, like on an on a engineering level, they're designed to... Take yeah. out the impact of impact, like of accidents by having breakaway parts. So there's a yeah. central pod that is structurally amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the rest of the components are designed to break the fuck away to. Absorb. So your car isn't yeah, total to whenever you get in an Yeah, well, I mean, it'll be total. They take the pack. Oh, the well, pack. well those, <laughs> those parts that break away absorb much more kinetic force because they're actually breaking away. Yeah, um, you know, and that's that's that. And I, I don't know, they they're stupid as hell. They look retarded. I hate yeah. how they drive. I test drove one. Yeah, I had to sit like I don't. Like <laughs> way yeah. so I thought I was like in a, I don't know I thought I was in some sort of Kama Sutra book was, uh, Is there a manual to how to sit in this I had one foot behind 15. my head The other foot was on the foot and break, you, you, like, you like got both your legs crossed past your yeah. seat and You're pushing the pedal with your it, it was like, Look up. at his fucking feet What size shoe do you wear? 15? 15. He's like 8,000 feet tall He wears size 15 shoes His Okay The distance between my gas pedal and my brake pedal And my Intrepid I'm pretty sure he could hit both of them with his foot. Sometimes the cars it happens. Yeah, I I yeah. I wear twelves and I can't do that. Like I can fit my foot in between that space. Yeah. So I'll miss sometimes. Like I, it rained recently and I no, almost no. died in a car accident. <laughs> Isn't that great when you whiff on your pedal? You're I like, did, yeah. hit the brakes. Fucking miss. <laughs> uh, so okay, I was I was driving down the road. I wasn't going very fast. I was doing like thirty miles an hour, but it, it just rained, so the roads were super wet. And I wasn't paying attention because I was listening to another podcast. And, and I, I <laughs> what? At, I Don't was, drive uh, a podcast. Yeah, exactly. God forbid you do that. Unless uh, it's ours. Uh, 
So I look at my phone to check what time it was because the clock on my car is fucked up and I never remember how off it is. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I look down, it took literally three seconds. I look down, press the button, see what time it is, press it again, and I look up, and the car in front of me has completely stopped. Ooh. As opposed to going oh, like a, roughly the same speed as me, they are stopped now. Yeah. And I'm maybe 150 feet away from him. Not very far. So I'm like, oh shit. I slam my foot down, completely whiff. Just right between the pedals. I'm like, fuck me. So in one motion, I bring my hand back and my foot back. <laughs> slam on the brakes and the horn at exactly nice. the same time. And I'm watching the guy, like, through his, his rear window. And I see him, like, he doesn't notice at first. And then he, like, looks around and he looks in his rear view. Sees me. And he tilts his head. And I'm like, I'm like bearing down on him, and then his brake lights go off for about a second and a half, yeah. inches, maybe three inches, cl- like close <laughs> to the car in front of him, and then stops again. I'm like, that wasn't far enough. <laughs> and I, I, I swear to God, I, I don't know how I didn't hit him. Yeah. It looked like I could hit him, but the car didn't jerk. I, wow. it had to have been less than an inch. I almost died. Oh, it man. was horrifying. One yeah. time I tapped the back of a lady's car in a Sonic drive through and then I just went in reverse, and I don't think she noticed. <laughs> <laughs> One time I told a woman that she got now, but now she knows. You lied. She's listening to this, she's like, she's I like, knew it. Son of a I bitch. knew it. <laughs> I knew he tapped. Wait, wait, wait. We have one in where Andrew did do something and got away with it. Steven told someone that he had... No, no, that I didn't do it. That That somebody else hit their car. Yeah, he told someone that someone else had hit their car when nothing had actually happened. To ruffle some feathers. And he... You're like... It was at Walmart, and I hate those people. (laughs) Those Walmart people. Wait, no, actually, no, that's, that's fair. There is a category of Walmart people. Oh, no, definitely. The do crazies! You remember, do you remember the guy oh, who was caught outside of Walmart about two or three months ago, butt naked, wagging his dick at people? Oh, heard about this, this. heard about this. Yeah. Yeah. I, was like, I did not. Yeah, it, it was the one uh, down on Kansas Expressway what? past Carney. What? Yeah, he was just standing out in front of the Walmart, oh butt naked, God. shaking his dick at people. Wow. And I, Why am I never around for this sort of thing? No, no, <laughs> this is the best part. This is the best part. So this made, like, news, like, local news, because, yeah. like, this dude was flashing his dick to people. There it is, yeah. I didn't find out about it on the news. I found out about it because I got on Facebook, and I saw a message that said, went to Walmart to grab some stuff for, you know, visiting family, and I was surprised to see a man naked shaking his dick at me. I had to do a double take from my mother. <laughs> oh. And oh, I, wow. <laughs> I, I saw it. I didn't look at the name first. Like, it was literally just like I told you. I read it and I was like, huh. And then I saw it and I was like, oh no. Because, oh my God. Because I don't know about you guys, but my parents are in a category of yes. non-sexuality. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. Like, yes. Like, like, Sorry. Like, Daniel Bryan over here. Yeah, it's Jesus. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Praise the breast just had a mini orgasm. <laughs> no, no, the opposite no, of no, nonsense. Just, yeah. No, it was literally like preach it. That was oh, like preach it. Yeah. But like, here's the thing. Like, I'm okay with it if it's a passing remark. Yeah. Like, my stepfather made uh, <laughs> on, on my mom's birthday was recently. And, and yeah. He tagged her in a check-in. And, and he was like, oh, we're getting... We're Fantastic getting, way. Yeah. We're, no, 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 it's better. It's better. He was like, getting, getting schnockered with my baby for her birthday. Oh, God. And I was like, Did, have you, has mom ever tried a woodchuck? I feel like she would love woodchucks. Like, completely innocent. Like, I don't know if my mom's ever had a hard cider before. Right. And I was asking, and he's like... And he'd she's be like, drinking. I'll give her a woodchuck. No, 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 no. <laughs> He was like, I don't know if she's ever had a woodchuck, but she's been hitting the hearts, the, the mudslides pretty pretty hard because she yeah. loves mudslides. Yeah. And he said she's been hitting the mudslides pretty hard. And not to be too graphic, but someone's getting lucky tonight. And I was like, oh. Oh, why? Oh, oh, oh God. God. All I could do would be like, <laughs> gross. God damn it, Dad! Is <laughs> that someone's calling my name? <laughs> I am not going to have a boner for a uh, week uh, now. Deleting my Facebook. <laughs> I quit <laughs> setting fire to my computer. Can't do it. I'm, I'm done. done. I'm out. Peace. No, but that's why I love my stepdad because he does shit like that. He he's he's me. <laughs> my dad told me he was getting lucky, and I gave him advice. <laughs> like, I was like, "Here's how you can improve it." Right there. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you trying this? 
<laughs> have you really the cut your face? Now all we need is there. a donkey and some coconut oil. Wow. <laughs> you went straight That's to intense. The goal. That's intense. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right. All right, we, we take the dark. Oh, We're not no. talking about. We, yeah. we, we need to go back. We need to go this back. So, okay, the most controversial episode ever. Of <laughs> Work in progress. We're not talking about anything new here. I know. It's not like we're in Tijuana or anything. Uh, <laughs> That's where the donkey shows happen. We're safe. We're in Missouri. Somewhere. <laughs> it was really giving a show. He was really giving a show. Uh, okay, so they're here. They're just more hidden. Yeah, yeah. those are rednecks, not donkeys. I saw an advertisement for a cockfight the other day. Did you really what? shit you not? On, it was like, on no. Craigslist? <laughs> no, it was. It might have been on Craigslist. Coming no. soon to Springfield. But it was posted on a Rooster McGann. <laughs> like there, it was just literally like a piece of computer paper that said <laughs> cockfight this time, this date. <laughs> And then it had a phone number. Was it like yeah. handwritten? Oh. It's at Mark. Or like, or like carved <laughs> in with a knife? No, no, no. It, it was a piece of paper, and I couldn't tell if it was crayon because I was in my car, but it kind of looked like crayon. Sponsored by awesome. Eno's Pizza. <laughs> so <laughs> square beyond compare. It, 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 it like, I wonder, I have to, I have to wonder if they thought they were clever not putting the address on there and just putting just a putting phone the number, number instead. Like, oh, the cops will never find us. It's out a this sting way. operation. <laughs> That's funny. Also, it's fucking Missouri. Who has cockfights in Missouri? Right. Oh, those guys. guys. Do you those guys. guys? <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I didn't say anything. What are you talking about? Okay, so let's 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 plead the fifth. <laughs> Every time. I expressly <laughs> invoke my privilege to avoid <laughs> self-incrimination. There. There you go. Okay. Uh, so let let's bring this. <laughs> more Jesus Christ. Because we've been talking about bullshit for so long. So, you, before we started this podcast, we uh, we talked to Steven a little bit about his endeavors, and he's already talked about how he's um, a master of, like, what, four instruments or something? No, not even four. Master no, not, no, no. <laughs> Master! No, 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 he no, can, no, he can no, no. You can play four instruments. You can call it playing by the <laughs> loosest definitions. But, but he can touch four instruments and make sound come out of them. Yes, <laughs> what he says. Uh, but see, he, he and I have something in common because he mentioned that he wanted to learn how to play the violin. And my my first reaction, and because I, I played violin for, hold on, let me do math real quick. Five or six years? Nice. Something like that. He says, let me do math real quick, and then counts out on yeah. his fingers. I, had, I don't know what <laughs> It was a dramatic pause it for was, the people uh, at home. So they're on the edges of their seats. Years, and my my instinctual reaction was, no, you don't. Why? <laughs> because, like, okay, here's the thing: people are you always like, as a violinist, they do. They very much do. Um, I want to be like the more you know. An excellent observation, isn't you? I want to be like um, Lindsey Sterling with hairy legs. You see, every. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, That's Christ. fantastic. Oh my god. So, okay, here's the thing though. People look at Lindsey Sterling, they look at people like um, Yo Yo Ma is also, yeah. is also no, an excellent I, example. Mm -hmm. right. People who play these like traditionally beautiful instruments, and and then they're hardcore rappers. And right. then they're hardcore rappers. No, this is the thing like, when you play an instrument like that, no one gives a shit. Unless like, you're awesome. Give, um, no, no, it's Unless not even the, the reason people like Lindsay Sterling isn't because she's awesome at playing the violin. It's because she's hot. She, it's, That's no, why. it's because it, one, one, it's one, one, she's hot. Not necessarily like the utmost important one, but one, That's she's important. hot. Yeah. <laughs> Two, she's notable because she is outed as a Mormon. So that's like her, her, that's not her shtick, but like, what, really? they're like, what? Lindsay Sterling's a Mormon? What? Whoa. Yeah. So, and three, she has done with her music something that most people don't. A common right. thing in an uncommon way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why people love her. So that's why you can go and you can show someone Lindsey Sterling and be like, and they'll be like, oh, I fucking love this. And then you'll show them something like Vivaldi. I and would prefer like, Vivaldi every hour of every day for <laughs> yes. life, bar nothing. You, you are yeah. a very bar small nothing. Minor, very small minority. Right. Fuck all modern music. I would take Vivaldi <laughs> every day. Yeah. And, and over metal, even. I would oh, give up the metal, metal guitar to play like Vivaldi did and to write as he did. Yep, done. But this deal. is the thing if you do that, you're doomed to a life of just poverty. Like, yeah. I, and I I'm know already that, bored. Like, the best. To say, part, most rock bands are pretty yeah. poor. Yeah, yeah, I'm already it's, bored. It's true. Yeah, I'm not too bored. But, ready. like, rock bands, at the very least, or any other type of music, like, yeah. fucking 16. 
Why are you pointing at me? No, 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 fucking I'm looking, I'm Mitch. Looking at you. Bam. Fucking I'm looking at you and I had a Mitch. thought. I didn't have my hand point. Um, Porter Robinson, who's a... Needs to be under my bio when we get our very, own website for this. He's a very fucking fun producer. Mitch. And like all my kids who are listening to this are going to be like, Yeah! Mitch <laughs> fucking um, and half of them are going to be like, his name is Mitch? <laughs> I thought that was dad. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. So, okay, so Porter Robinson is, is a, a very famous EDM music producer. That's redundant, whatever. Um, See the one with the slanty eyes? I don't actually know, because I don't know what he looks like. My problem, with, my problem with, like, uh, electronic <laughs> music producers is I never know what they look like unless it's, like, Dead Mouse or Squillix. I know what school looks like because I used to listen to from first to last. Yeah. And that blew my mind the day I realized that was the same dude. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. He had bad acting. Your diary of my teen angst has a body count, and now I'm dropping fat beats. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so he has he has a Twitter account and my it's it's one of my favorite quotes. His bio, he might have changed he might have changed it now, but it used to say Hi, my name is Porter Robinson. I'm 19 years old, and my music career is almost over. <laughs> oh, wait, I remember And it's very that, yeah. true, because when it comes to modern music, it seems like these music careers start very early, mm-hmm. especially in, in EDM, especially there, because it's so easy to make. You can be oh, yeah, and it took me two days to learn how to make drum and bass yeah, for exactly. years. Yeah, exactly. And, it. and it's, it's very easy to make, because literally, you can just sit there, and you just be like, I want the bass sound like this, I want the drum sound like this, I want... This to be the melody. You don't make the instrumental make sound. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to play. You don't have to learn anything. You just have to learn how to program, mm-hmm. which isn't to somehow like discredit. Right. Yeah. Since I make music. that music, I can I can confirm yeah. this. Like I, I I very much enjoy the music, and I think that it still takes a very musical. It's easier than guitar. Making. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it's easier, but it still takes mm-hmm. a deal. You still have to have an ear for album. music exactly. and you know compositional skills. But when it comes to things like these classical string instruments. You get to a point where you, you can't master something like that very easily. If you don't start at a very young age, you're, you're going to do it, and it's going to take you like 10, 12 years to get to a point where you can even play to a real audience. Yeah. And mm-hmm. at that point, it's going to be rich, snooty people who don't give a shit about you. Right. Well, it's, and, yeah. well it's not just that, but it's like the amount of practicing you'll have to do. Like, I know people, the minimum is like three hours. Yeah, a day. To, a day, right. Yeah. And like, I knew a woman, uh, my piano teacher was a, funny enough, she was a symphony flautist. She played the flute for the symphony. She taught me piano. It was so weird. <laughs> Did she but do she, like awesome, like, Yeah, she flute? was kick ass. Yeah. But like, when it came to um, practicing, she it was not unheard of for her to practice for six hours a day. And I was just like, nope, nope. Oh, I'm I've, done, I've done that on time. So yeah. I, <laughs> Yeah, but here's I have thing. not every single day, but there's been a couple mm-hmm. weeks on yeah. end where I practiced that long when I would, didn't yeah. have jobs yeah. and shit. It's like, well, if I'm not going to work, I'm going to at least further. I'm going to do something for Yeah, damn right. But it's because with the things like that, um, modern instruments like guitar, drums, bass, you yeah. know, these these instruments that we use every day in our music, mm-hmm. they're, they're still tied to muscle memory, but it's less memory and more strength. For example, guitar. If you don't have pinky strength when you play guitar, yeah. you're, you're kind of boned. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you not. have to get your pinky to work. Yeah. Because Very few I, people can play cool shit without the pinky. Exactly. Just because. But when it comes to, like, I have the weakest pinky in the world, and I go into fourth position like nothing. Mm-hmm. And fourth position is a little bit more than halfway up on a violin's neck. Yep. Um, because you don't need the strength. But you do need to have that quick reflex. Right. Because Dexterity. classical music is very much of a, it, it's, there's slow classical music, but even slow classical music requires quick changes. You can go yes. from a G, which is the lowest string, to an E, which is the highest string, right. and literally one note, you need to be able to flip. Oh, yeah. So when someone tells me they want to learn the violin like, like that, my, in, my reflex is no, you don't, no. because that's so much work. But it's surprising to me that I said, no, you don't. And you, you came back and were like, yeah, I do. Because you just, you have this, this drive, it seems, yeah. that you want to pick up an instrument and just learn it. Like, even if you'll do nothing with it, you just want to learn. You're truly, like, one of the first truly holy musical people I've ever met. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think, I think maybe one other person I've ever met. And I don't talk to her anymore because... Things we were never really well. We were never really friends. She's a horrible. At, at most, I'm Facebook. We don't talk friend. about it since right. the incident. Since you <laughs> <laughs> me moving away. It sounds like an X Files. Exactly. Yeah. Well, 
And well, I think one thing to kind of consider with with violin is that it's not, or, or classical music in general, it's not so much about like strength with your. You talk about with, like fourth mm-hmm. fourth position with your pinky. It's more about confidence. Yeah. Like it doesn't mean a whole lot if you can pl- if you can press and play, but if you play timidly, it's versus if you just hit it with as much gusto mm-hmm. as you can. Yeah. That makes more difference than it does with like you know. Oh, I can hit that. You know, I can press as hard as I can and get that string. It's how hard you can play it. Yeah, and that that was that was I think my greatest downfall as mm. as a violinist because yeah. I would fucking blow. It's so at, hard. You know, not even like I I was a I was second violin. Yeah. So yeah. I wasn't <laughs> so like nice. I wasn't so like good at it, but yeah. I was decent. <laughs> and I, I I never really I was never in the back. Yeah, I was I was always either last first violin or yep. somewhere in the front for second. Yep. Mm-hmm. So uh, and the way that works is that the front chair for first violin is the best violinist you have. Yep. And and it goes back from there. The the first chair for second violin is exactly the this middle. Yep. Like mm-hmm. the middle mm-hmm. violinist you have. Um. So I was right around there. Okay. Uh, same here. I was the same way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. I would always hate the songs that we had to do that were very slow, very <laughs> yeah. timid, very yes. quiet. Because uh, they were very pretty. They were yeah. the prettiest songs in the world. There's a song, Lullaby, by some composer I can never remember because fuck me. Right. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's literally the most beautiful song I've ever heard, but I hated playing it because I can't stand that shit. Mm-hmm. I, I cannot stand, it just sounds like screeching to me, yeah. regardless of which string it's on. But when it came to things like... Uh, Shipping up, not not shipping up to Boston. Going to Boston, isn't it? <laughs> going out to Boston. You know, no, I get them confused <laughs> because the song's title is "Going to Boston," and shipping up to Boston actually uses the opening riff and the melody from that song mm-hmm. as its base because it's originally a classically written song. Like sure, it's yeah, an Irish like fiddle song. I played the shit out of that because you do nothing but just wail on your violin, yeah. like you just fly your fingers over and you just. Fucking press. Yeah, but, but that intensity brings out the fun to actually play. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But it's so rare that you have to match the intensity like of the song. Yeah, exactly. You can't play a very sober, somber sounding song as hard as you possibly can. It no, it oh, yeah. sounds incorrect. The energy is weird. Yeah. Fade into it, make it more of a rounded, you know, sullen sound. Yeah. But if if you're playing thrash metal, you can't play that weak. <laughs> you have to rock that bitch like it. You're gonna die tomorrow. Tonight, gonna, you're I'm gonna, gonna, gonna die tonight. This is your last show. Rock hard. That's mm-hmm. thrash. I want to hear thrash metal with an electric violin you, now. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd, that'd be, be right. very cool. Yeah. For the longest time, I really liked listening to Apocalyptica. I saw them. Oh my God. That was fucking awesome. You saw them? Yeah, in St. Louis, like oh, four wow. years ago. I want to see. It was so tight. It was awesome as hell. It really was. Um, they didn't have Corey Taylor on them, on tour with them. So well, for the, was it their World's Fly tour? Yeah, okay. and uh, it was uh, with the guy, the vocalist from Filter. Okay, yeah. Um, but I can't remember his name. But he did the the songs, so the, you know, like the "I'm Not Jesus," or, you know, yeah. and, uh, pff, fuck the other one. It was I don't care. I think. Yep, I don't care. Days, with uh, the guy from Three Days Grace, yeah. yeah. But it was the dude from Filter that did it, and he still did a pretty good job. But it was that oh, was that was, that was sorry, one sorry. hell of a show. Sorry, Electric yeah. cellos, yeah. hell yeah! Like even hell if you yeah. don't like the fact that they play classical instruments, they put on a they were awesome. hell of a show. They made like fifteen thousand people headbang for an hour. Yeah, they're, they're solid. They on a fucking awesome. like two cellos and a violin. Yeah, man. That's so awesome. it was so cool. It really was. That's really cool. It's rad. It's rad to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I recall you didn't, from our you didn't music, respond very favorably, favorably to World's Collide, though. I didn't listen to it a whole lot. Well, plus that was a long time ago. I haven't, yeah. I haven't honestly listened to a podcast in a while. But my taste has really changed. That came out, I think, when we were in high school too. Twelve thirty. Twelve fifty-seven. It's one o'clock. I'm into it's almost one o'clock. I mean, that's alright. We're, oh. we're about to wrap. I, I'm into all um, sorts of different shit than I was like. Oh, you know, oh, shit. I, I would give my girlfriend a go. Yeah. I really should. I really should get back into those guys. Um, so, yeah, does anybody else have anything, uh, plug your, uh, your shit? Oh, you, got, you said you had a show yeah. coming up. Well, uh, shit, can we do a part two sometime? Because this is fun. No, I yeah, enjoy the yeah. combo. Yeah, I, uh, uh, whenever, my, my plan is to, whenever I get more than just one microphone, I'm going to have back all the, the guests that I think really work mm-hmm. very well. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll gladly have Oh, well, I'd love to be things. here. I uh, had so much fun. But, I don't know, um... I, I, if you're gonna play, you know, if only for tonight by Fraught Apparel, I, I that, really that think that song. Mm-hmm. Um, 
if you, if you guys like that, we're playing at Nathan P. Murphy's on October 18th. Uh, I believe it's five bucks. It's an unplugged show, acoustic, which uh, it's my first in my life. I've never rocked an acoustic show before. Nice. Cool. Um, it's going to be really cool. Um, Halloween night, my band Barium Alive is having like a sneak peek show, like uh, playing five of our songs and a bunch of, uh, you know, some covers <laughs> with the new lineup, a sneak peek since uh, the first show since last November. Yep. That's at this uh, the house party. Uh, location will be announced. I know it, cool. but I'm not going to tell y'all. Because it's not. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't been announced yet. It's, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a PR yeah. ploy. Yeah, it's a exactly. secret show that's not secret. Keep, but, keep a lookout for it. Um, and, but that same night, uh, Lindbergh's Fraught Apparel is also playing after the house party show. Um, that Barry was playing. Gonna so I'm going to have yeah. a double header. It's going to be, gonna be yeah, yeah. And um, you want to go see. If you want to go see Steven get get sweaty and play. Well, public. basically, I have beers. I take my clothes off and I play a concert. And what girl yeah. doesn't like that? I, I need a tip jar. jar. And some juice. Get me a tip jar, please. <laughs> some. It'll some literally tips. just be like a beer bottle with the neck broken off. Like that's your tip jar. Use your teeth, and it's all the more metal. Literally, you're like, <laughs> wait, that's out of context. I meant to, break. <laughs> so, to break the bottle. No, no, no. That's an excellent way to. Like, oh, perfect. Um, this has been episode 10. I assume we'll do it episode 11. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's two. Uh, the only thing I can really plug right now is like, uh, next. No, actually, I'm sorry. This coming weekend on Saturday, I'm going to be performing with my improv troupe, uh, Betty and the Baldwin. And that's, uh, it's, I believe it's uh, 8 o'clock this Saturday and then 10 o'clock. Uh, 10 o'clock's Pay What You Will, 8 o'clock's the usual main stage show. So. so I would try and get this podcast uploaded by Saturday. Right. I'll probably right. go by Saturday. It might be Saturday that yeah. it happens. And I'll also promote this as well. Um, on Friday night at 8 p.m., a improv group from Kansas City called After School Special is coming. And they are very, very talented. They feature two members uh, of an improv group called Chess with Death. And they are amazing. Chess with Death came back in April and did a workshop at the Skinny Improv. And it was Awesome. I love the skinny improv. Oh, they're sure. so yeah, oh, I, yeah. Nice. I, I do improv, yeah. Oh, nice. And um, yeah, it's funny we learned this after the end of the yeah, podcast. Exactly. <laughs> Finally, know? we have something yeah. to talk about. Some it's connecting. connecting. But yeah, um, Christian and Juliet from Chess with Death came uh, came to town uh, back in April and did a workshop, and it was just stellar. And I want them to come back and teach us more, more about improv. So I have great. to learn. I have to learn she, all of she it. She has a brain that thirsts for knowledge. Uh, <laughs> we have we have two guests tonight, even that, hey. that thirst for knowledge in different in different ways. Comedy music. Knowledge yes. is power, you know. Yeah. It really is. Um, <laughs> the fuck out of this I live here. <laughs> I have the power. So, um, all right, so we, uh, what, what is it, October 18th at Nathan P. Murphy's? Yeah, the Unplugged. Yep. Um, unplugged show with Front Apparel, October 18th at Nathan P. Murphy's, uh, downtown Springfield. Five dollar. Five dollar. Twenty one plus. Five dollar, twenty one plus only. Uh, Tess, when was your... Uh, Betty and the Baldwin is uh, this Saturday, what is that, the 12th, 12th, 12th. October 12th, and that's uh, 8 p.m. Right, 8 is p.m. Yeah. is... Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's uh, 10 p.m. for students, or excuse me, 10, $10 for students, $12 for adults, and then the 10 o'clock show is pay what you will. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, and if you uh, give me a link to the Friday night show and yeah. Saturday, and I'll put them in the description for awesome. the episode. Uh, at the very least, we can plug it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. 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 Time. yeah, I'll send the link. You know yeah. me, I'm a promotion whore. So. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, this has been episode 10 of Work in Progress with our two lovely guests, Tess Devine, and also Stephen March. Uh, Much obliged. Much obliged. Of uh, Bearing Alive and Probably Carol. This has been. I'm Mitch. Tess. I'm Stephen. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is Jake. We'll see you guys. Uh, very, very soon.